it has gotten to that point in year 11 where mocks are right around the corner and I'm sure many of you are worrying about how you're going to revise to achieve the best grades possible and to prepare you adequately for your real exams. Although I'm not a magician who can grant you unlimited grade nines, I do believe I can give some tips and pointers so you can improve and do better in your exams. My name's Dylan Boating and in my GCSEs this year, I achieved 12 nines. And in this video, I'm going to answer whether you should revise for mocks and how I revise to achieve the best grades possible. The first question is, should you revise for your mocks? And the obvious answer here is yes. You shouldn't listen to the people claiming you shouldn't revise for mocks, saying that revising is doubting one's ability to perform under pressure. These will be the same guys asking you for answers or to explain topics just before the exam starts. But there are some ways that I would not advise you should be revising in, given that they can be quite counterintuitive. Firstly, is mindless passive tasks. For example, rereading and highlighting. These methods do not stimulate your brain enough and do not practice any type of retrieval of knowledge, which is the basis of practically every single GCSE exam. Highlighting is crap because it doesn't make you think hard, but it makes you feel as though you're revising. You're not. The next method I don't advise you should use or depend on is notes. Now this might seem quite controversial as many people rely on notes fully for their revision. Although notes can be useful if you put that own words. However, just copying out the textbook word for word with a nice looking title is not putting it in your own words. And so that would not be very useful. Now moving on, here are the most useful ways you can revise for your GCSE subjects. Firstly, I would say Anki. This is hands down the best tool out there for fact retrieval. Many people shy away from Anki given that its user interface looks very unfinished in comparison to a website such as Quizlet, which looks much more enticing. However, for subjects such as biology, chemistry and physics, Anki is second to none. This is because active recall system forces your brain to retrieve facts that are very likely to appear with a similar wording based on your flashcards in your GCSE exams. Additionally, the space repetition function brings back cards with intervals that are when you're most likely to forget the information. This means you do not need to worry about personally scheduling when you're going to review a certain topic because Anki does that all for you. And as long as you build a consistent routine which includes completing your Anki review cards each day, then you won't have to worry about reviews because Anki has you covered. The next key tip I'd give for your GCSEs is to make use of specifications. These are a very underrated tool as many students believe specifications are only for the teacher to look at and have nothing useful for the students, but you could not be more wrong here. Take for example a modern foreign language that you do. Your specification will have a complete list of every possible word that can appear on your reading, listening and writing papers. You can then in turn turn these into flashcards and once learned you have no excuse for not knowing a piece of vocabulary on the test given for sciences they cover every possible point that you could be tested on so what i did and would strongly advise is to go through the specification and either find anki flashcards that cover every point or make flashcards to fill in the gaps and this will ensure that you don't get caught by surprise by any unexpected topics on the day now I'll give one specific tip for each of the major GCSEs. Firstly, Maths. Maths Genie is most likely your most useful resource, as well as GCSE Maths Tutor. You'd start by picking your target grade and covering all the questions in there. If you're not able to answer the questions, move on to the video slash mark schemes where you'll study the method used and answer the question again, or perhaps move down to a lower grade and try to answer all those questions before moving up. Next would be triple science. PMT is your most useful resource here. With topic specific flashcards for every specification point, I recommend first going through the flashcards, then completing as many of the topic past paper questions as possible. But more importantly, noting the marks you lose every time and turning your mistakes into flashcards that you can revise from later. Next, we have English literature. I'd say the most useful 
action plan for this would be create essay plans that are very adaptable and versatile as well as using the resources around you such as physics and math tutor that often offer high level analysis for many essay topics that could come up for each of your books as well as may seem quite controversial but chat gpt however you must do this with caution because it's, it's known to make up quotes and so although it should not be a problem on the new updated chat gpt you should definitely use it for ideas but do not really rely on it for your whole essay otherwise that could cause problems <clears throat> for english language i would recommend very similar advice and if you want to see a 40 out of 40 creative writing example that i achieved in my real english language gcse paper one subscribe as a video will be coming out on how to achieve a grade nine in gcse english language as well as comment and i will reply and see if i can get that to you if you did enjoy this video subscribing would be a good choice as i plan out to bring a new series of 12 separate episodes on how i got a nine in each of these subjects thanks for watching